I want to thank you for being here and congratulating you on making it through another day and continuing to play this game called life. So I really want to invite you today to honor yourself for, you know, overcoming whatever it is that you had to overcome to be here today. Um, and if you weren't able to join us today, thank you for watching this recording. And again, thank you for showing up for yourself and for the people that you care about. With me today, uh, we're going to have some amazing uh, presenters joining us today. So this webinar is in partnership with Mayra Barragan O'Brien, who is the founder of Undocu Mental Health. And so she's going to be joining us and guiding us through some amazing content. We're also going to be having Dani Amador and um, they are our mental health coordinator. So we're very excited to have Dani join our team here at Immigrants Rising and she'll be sharing a little bit more about some of the resources that we have available here at Immigrants Rising. And as I shared earlier, my name is Rocio Preciado, the Leadership and Partnerships Manager. I was formerly undocumented, graduated from UC Santa Cruz with a degree in psychology and feminist studies. And currently I lead our mental health career program, which offers support, mentorship, and guidance to professionals who are working towards accumulating hours for their licensure to become um, licensed therapists here in California. And so I'm very excited to be leading some of that work and to continue to bring in capacity and more people who can foster and offer mental health services to the undocumented community. And with that, I'm gonna go ahead and pass it to Myra uh, so that she can go ahead and introduce herself. And then Dani will go ahead and introduce um, themselves. Thank you, Lucio, and thank you, Immigrants Rising, for the invitation. I appreciate you, each and everybody that is here. And if you are listening to the recording, uh, thank you so much for being a part of this. I am going to keep it very brief uh, because you're going to be hearing from me for, oh, for quite a while for, during this meeting. Uh, but just a little bit about me. I was born and raised in Mexico until the age of 14. Um, I came here to the U.S. at the age of 14, and I self-deported. That was in 2001. Then I self-deported back in 2010 and came back in 2013. Uh, th that was the reason why I do not qualify for DACA. And one of the reasons that I am a fierce advocate of mental health and the immigrant community, and the reason why I founded Undocumented Health, which is an organization that helps to destigmatize mental health in the immigrant community. Um, I'm gonna pass it on to you, Danny. Hello, thank you everyone for being here. Um, yeah, my name is Danny, they, she pronouns. Um, I'm Immigrants Rising New Mental Health Coordinator. Um, I'm helping just put together the support groups um, that we have going on right now. And y'all definitely hear more about them throughout the presentation, um, but yeah, um, a little bit about me. Um, I came to the U.S. when I was nine um, from Veracruz, Mexico, and have been undocumented um, ever since. Um, I didn't qualify for DACA, so that has also been something that has informed a lot of my personal experience and just the advocacy work that I've been um, just really passionate to be a part of and um, happy to be here and glad that um, there's more and more resources that are coming um, or developing for mental health resources and Immigrants Rising is definitely doing a lot. So I'm glad that folks are going to get to learn more about them today. Thank you both so much. Thank you for contributing to this webinar. And Danny, thank you for joining us and welcome to the team. For today's session, we're going to start off with a grounding activity, uh, so that, which is going to be facilitated by Myra. So we're going to be engaging in a grounding activity. Um, we're also going to be touching on understanding mental health, give you a little bit more insight as to what mental health is. Uh, we're also going to be touching on what is therapy and how can it help. Um, we'll also be covering accessing mental health resources, ways in which you or the folks that you're working with can access mental health resources. We'll also 
We're also going to be covering some of immigrants' rising resources, as well as some additional state and national resources that you can access. Towards the end, we will have an opportunity to answer some questions that might come up. And you may also submit your questions using the Q&A function in this webinar, as well as using the chat function. Um, I will be sharing and responding to some of those questions throughout the webinar. And we will also be highlighting and uplifting some of those questions after the webinar as well. So your questions are very welcome. I'm going to go ahead and pass it on to Myra, who's gonna guide us through a wellness slash grounding activity. Thank you once again. So a lot of you, when you join different wellness spaces, one of the, the, one of the exercises that we uh, mental health professionals like to engage in is something that can help you ground yourself. And grounding techniques are so many different, they can be so many different ones. But for the sake of today, um, I will ask you to practice uh, the five, four, three, two, one grounding technique with us. And what this is about is if you can sit comfortably in your space, we're going to be using our five senses in order to ground ourselves. You can feel free to breathe comfortably, however feel comfortable for you. And this exercise is for us to try to be present, which I know is very difficult to be present, especially when you're listening to someone speak for a large period of time, or when we're thinking about things that we have to do after the meeting or things that we have to do while we're, we're in the meeting, or things that happened in the past that maybe you thought that you could have done better. For the sake of this activity, we're gonna be using our five senses. And I would like to encourage you to look for five things that you can see. You can feel free to name, and, name them out loud or simply acknowledge. Maybe the cup, a paper, a TV screen, and this. Now identify four things that you can touch and feel free to do that. If you're touching a cup, how does it feel? Does it have cold water, a warm drink? How does it feel? And then choose three other things that you can touch. Next, three things that you can hear. What is it that you can hear? that maybe you haven't paid attention to? Is it a dog barking, your heater system, maybe people talking in the background? What is it that you can hear? Next, two things that you can smell. And this is something that we don't typically think about or we don't engage in, but what are two things around you that you can grab and you can smell? Is there a candle around you? Is there food around you? Choose those two things. Lastly, one thing that you can taste. If there's nothing around you that you can taste, name one thing that you love. Hopefully with, with this, practice, whenever you're feeling that your mind is racing, that your mind is, is thinking about the future that is dwelling in the past, it can help you ground yourself and it can help you be, help you be present and be mindful of this place, of the place that you're in and the things that are around you. Now, I'm going to start by, I want this space to be as interactive as possible. And so I am going to be talking a lot, but I'm also going to be asking some questions. So you please feel free to put them in the chat. Um, so that way this can be the less boring as possible. Okay. So I know a lot of people talk about mental health, but what it is, what, what is mental health? So the World Health Organization describes mental health as a state of well-being in which an individual realizes their own abilities, can cope with the normal stresses of life, can work productively, and is able to make a contribution to their community. 
in other words, it's a state of being in which you can find that power within yourself in order for you to live a good life. And this is very subjective. It is not work productively depending on what capital society tells you that you need to work. It is not about how much or little you think or people tell you that you're contributing to your community. It's about what feels good for you and what you have the capacity for and just what makes you feel like you have in a, you are in a well, in a good state of being that you're able to do all these things. Now, with that being said, I do have a question for you. Again, I would like to encourage you to put it in the chat. And that is, what are some of the struggles that the undocumented community faces? I'm gonna give it a minute so that way those of you listening and tuning in can provide some of the things that maybe you as an undocumented person struggles with, or maybe somebody that you see in your community they struggle with. Okay, so our apologies. I I'm thinking that you may not be able to, to engage in the chat. Um, so with that being said, we apologize about that. And we're hoping that at least when we put these questions out there, um, you're at least thinking about them. It should be enabled now. So if folks would like to share in the chat, you're welcome to do so. Thank you, Lucia. Okay. Thank you so much for participating out there and thank you so much for, for engaging in, in this activity. Like I said, our goal is not to sit in here and dump information on you, but also to make it engaging and to make it easier for you to grasp this information and and go with it. Um, I see that some comments of fear of deportation, healthcare access, borders, fear of not being able to meet uh, their family basic needs, financial struggles and oppression. Yes, thank you so much for, for sharing some of those struggles that you and other community members may be struggling with. And yes, as you can see, a lot of those things that you mentioned are the things that we all know. We struggle with grief, with racism, with oppre navigating oppressive systems. The uncertainty of DACA and uncertainty, not just of DACA, but the whole lives and what it means to not have a documented status. Limited access to healthcare resources, limited access to jobs, limited access to many different opportunities. And yeah, lack of mental health resources. I have another question for you. And that is, how do you know when you're struggling with any of these things or even more that we didn't mention today, how do you know when you should reach out for help? Or what are some of the signs when you realize, you know what, I think it might be necessary for me to either talk to someone, whether it is a mental health professional, a friend, there's something going on, whether it's my thoughts, my behaviors, my feelings, and feel free to put them in the chat as well. Um, and if you would like to share some of those things that, some of the signs that you look out for. Okay, I see that some people are saying when they're feeling lethargic, when they're feeling shame, when their sense, sense of worth is increasing, when they feel hopeless, when 
thoughts are overtaking their lives, when they're an, an when they're at age with their emotions, that increase of anxiety. Yes, yes. Thank you so much for sharing. Um, again, some of these things are the things that I'm glad that some of you here are aware of some of those things, some whatever you, that you believe is unhealthy, that you find that they're problematic and you feel like there needs to be a change. When you somebody mentioned the hopelessness or helplessness, there are many different things that have changed that your eating habits are not the same, that not being interested in those activities that you used to like, you used to go out and take walks and then that changed and you no longer have that interest in taking walks in nature. Uh, when you have difficulty maintaining healthy relationships, when a lot of people believe that it has to be when there's something wrong, but there's also sometimes you just want to self-explore. You want to get, you know, you want to get to know yourself a little better. And there are maybe different changes in your life that you want to healthily cope with. The next question that I have for you is, what are some of the practice that you do when you're struggling with these things and you have noticed these changes in your life? How do you cope with them? What are some of the things that you do to increase or to foster that mental wellness? We're also gonna give it a minute to see some of the things that some of you are engaging in. And maybe some others, as you read them, you can see if some of those things could work for you as well. Okay, so I see folks saying reading, journaling, praying, yeah, meditating. Yeah, feeling your emotions is a huge one. Identifying and feeling them. You want to, you know, you want to, you feel sad, you feel frustration, you want to cry it out. Yes, by all means. Um, and yes, coming back to our breaths. Breath work is so, so very important. Body movement, meditation. Yes, therapy. Acceptance, like that radical acceptance of that situation, not judging that situation, but accepting that this is the current situation that we're in. And yeah, finding solutions. Either if the solution is to feel your feelings and go with them, or if your solution is something practical, like here's the way to go about it, let's try to go that way. Yes, both work, great. Yes, thank you so much, yes. Um, as some of you mentioned, that self-care, like biking, talking to friends, that community or, or connection, which is talking to friends, that body movement that some of you mentioned, um, checking with your physician, yeah, that physical health is also very important. Um, those eating habits, um, boundaries, art. Some people find healing and I'm included in that. Some people in art, in humor, medication, and yeah, some of you mentioned therapy. And that's why I wanted to go a little bit into what therapy is, what it entails, that part of confidentiality. Um, and before going to talking about what therapy is, what it isn't, what are some of the things that you have heard about therapy? Whether they're negative things or positive things or neutral things, whether they're true or not, what are some of the things that you have heard about therapy from friends, family members, people on TV? Feel free to from anywhere that you have heard about it. Okay, so I hear that it can be uncomfortable. Yes, that is very true. As many of you know, healing is not linear. Healing is not progress, progress, progress. Sometimes that healing word, that therapy word, you're gonna see some progress in the, in the first three sessions, 
then you seem to take a step back, then another step back, then you try to push forward and you see some progress and it is a process by itself. Um, but yeah, someone mentioned it is powerful, a vulnerable experience where you get to simultaneously take a step back from yourself and also zoom into yourself. Yes. As a find a way to continue to journey, the journey to healing and understanding. That is a beautiful way to, to see therapy. Thank you so much for sharing. Um, I do want to mention some of the things that we all have heard that, you know, therapy is for the crazies, you know, therapy is for weak people. Um, you know, I don't need therapy. I can pray the problem away or I can just talk to friends and family, which I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to clarify that both are powerful. When you practice whatever spiritual practices that you engage in at the same time that you're in therapy or practicing that community connection with therapy, that combination and maybe additional resources can be very powerful in that healing journey. But we've also heard about, you know, yeah, therapy is just about getting that medication and then move forward. I'll see you next month for another dose. Uh, some people think that it's going to solve all of your problems um, or that in within a few sessions, you're going to be healed and you're going to be able to move forward. Sorry about that. But before talking about what therapy is, I want to mention what therapy is not. And I want to clarify that therapy is not magic. And therapy is not a place in which you're going to be getting that advice of, here's my problem. And your therapist is going to tell you, okay, got it. You got to do one, two, three, and it's going to go away. It is not a place in which you're going to be judged either. And it shouldn't be a place in which you feel judged. Also, I know that most places offer only brief sessions, whether it's a like six to 12 at the most, and they expect you that whatever it is that you're carrying, that it should be fixed within those eight weeks. Unfortunately, you know, the systems, a lot of the systems that are in place, that's what they are able to offer. But unfortunately, most of the time, eight sessions, six sessions, 12 sessions is not enough. And something that I also want to highlight are two things. One of them is that therapy is not going to solve being overworked and underpaid. And it's also not going to cure poverty, racism, oppression, homophobia, and none of those other systems that have been in place to keep us down. However, it is a place in which you're going to be able to work in setting boundaries and being able to find empowerment to walk away from some of those places in which are encouraging those practices. I can talk a lot about what therapy is, but this image, for me, it is such a powerful image, such a descriptive image without using words. And what I see here is that the client, there's a, it seems to be a dark cloud on this client and the therapist is right across the client and there, there seem to be struggling with something. And as you can see, the therapist is not waving the magic wand or coming, with, coming up with solutions out of thin air. The therapist is utilizing what the client has and is combining them with one of the tools that they have. And it's putting back that knowledge, that experiences, that experience from the client and is helping the client grow. That's what therapy is. A therapy, a therapy session is a collaborative effort in which both people are working together for the, their, for the client to find that growth within themselves. And of course, no two therapists are the same. Sometimes we may go with the therapist and it seems to not work. It seems like it's not the optimal place to be. 
but in reality, it might be that that therapist was not the right person for you. So I would like to encourage you to, if it didn't work one time, to give it a try to another therapist because you have no idea how your healing journey might turn out when you're a match with the right therapist. Now, quickly, I'm going to touch on confidentiality. Is it really confidential? Yes, it is confidential, but I want to highlight some of those uh, limits to that confidentiality. And that is, there are some that you might be told many times, maybe you've been with the therapist before and they tell you that those limits are if you sign a release of information. So let's say your partner calls your therapist. And it's not a couple's therapy session, but they found out, your partner found out that you're in therapy. If your partner gets calls your therapist and says, oh, you know what? Um, you know, my partner hasn't been here all day. Um, can you tell me? And I know that they had a session with you. Can you tell me where they are? Your therapist will not confirm or deny that someone is a client unless you sign it, I want you to let know to let my my partner know about what happened in the therapy session other than that it will be kept confidential you have heard about if you were to be a danger to yourself or others or if a child an elderly person or a disabled person is being abused and of course if you are in a family session well, you are encouraged to keep whatever happens in the room to stay in the room. However, um, the other person, the other people in the room, other family members, other group members are not, um, they don't hold the same ethical and legal guidelines that the therapist does. And other ones is if you were to, um, let's say you're working with a lawyer because you are divorcing your partner or ex-partner, um, if the lawyer sends the therapist a subpoena, nothing is going to happen except that the, the therapist is going to assert their privilege, meaning that they will not release information unless you sign that release of information or if it's a subpoena by a judge, so a court one, not a lawyer. They're also not going to disclose information about your immigration status. There's not going to be a way in which they will call a uh, border patrol or ICE to say that you are a client and that you have uh, that you don't have an immigration status. Um, there sometimes they seek consultation, but they provide only the information necessary to continue to provide support. And of course, when you work in an office, there is some admin support that may have access to those records, but they will not. Um, they they also follow legal and ethical guidelines that they're that they're following all the time, and they will not do anything harmful with their records. The same thing they stay in managed care, meaning with their insurance. Sometimes they may need a diagnosis, so they may need um, dates in which you went in order for them to be able to provide that. Um, release of funds for you to pay for those uh, sessions. And when this happens, what would happen to the therapist that releases information without your consent? They may get fired. They will, they could lose their license. They could get sued, fined, and even face jail time. When they, do, when they do break that confidentiality is typically um, because they are following those legal and ethical guidelines. And they typically is, if, I guess, again, if a child is in danger, they will call Child Protective Services. If you are in imminent danger, they need to call somebody to your house so that they can take you to somewhere where you're safe. They may call law enforcement or even hospital or crisis clinics. But if they're only going to be releasing information that is necessary for you to be safe or for others to be safe. Um, I've myself been in different situations. 
Um, yeah, I've myself been in different situations where I've had to call different institutions. And not one time has anyone asked about anybody's legal status or anything like that. What they need to know is what's their address? Are they in danger? You know, do they have means to hurt themselves? Okay, we're gonna go there, take them to where they're safe, and that's it. Okay, I see a question about um, if a child is in therapy, so it depends on the age of the minor. If the child is in California 12 years of older and they can, um, they can, depending if, if the therapist were to disclose that they are seeing the, the minor 12 years of older, um, they will not, if it's harmful to share that information with the parents, then the child is able to, or the minor is able to consent to their own treatment. Now, if for those little ones that are 11 and, and less than 11 years old, then the therapist will encourage the parents to have that confidentiality. And the therapist is only going to share with the therapist whatever is relevant so that the child is safe and with the consent of the child. But if you're 12 years of older, know that you in California, you are able to consent to your own treatment. Um, but again, each state has a slightly different age. So I would encourage you to look into those guidelines in each state um, if you want to, to see a therapist by yourself. Very quickly about accessing mental health services. This is something that we are going to be putting some links in the chat uh, so that way you can access some of those services. So feel free to take some screenshots. Please know that if you have insurance, you can call your insurance so that they can give you a list of therapists that are approved by them or that they can give you the consent so that you can search in a directory to find the therapist that takes your insurance. But if you don't have insurance, you can pay out of pocket or there's some places in which you can access it for free. You are allowed to ask questions. When you're searching for, for in these directories, you're gonna be able to search by location, ethnicity, specializations, uh, price range, if they have pro bono slots, um, and you're able to ask questions. Once you make that phone call to consult with them, you can ask, you know, what is your background? Both, what do you specialize in? What type of populations do you work with? What is your approach in therapy? How do you access, how do you assess process, progress? How do you, it, all the questions that you are looking for in the therapist, whether you're paying out of pocket or whether you're accessing it for free, you are allowed to ask questions about your, your therapist, your therapist credentials, or any of the things that you can think of that make you feel safe. You can even ask your therapist, hey, how do you go about taking notes? Do you ever put on your notes anything regarding people's immigration status? Uh, if I were to disclose that I use drugs for fun, um, even though it's legal in my state, are you gonna put that, how are you gonna, how does that look like in your note? So all of these questions you are, you have the right to, to ask anything that you can think of that makes you feel safe. With that being said, I would encourage you to take a screenshot of this, or if you're looking at, at this recording later, think about if you can picture your therapist, the therapist that you can that you want to work with. What are some of those identities or qualities that you're looking for? Are you looking for a Latinx therapist? Are you looking for a Black therapist? Are you looking for, you know, someone that is LGBTQI plus, not just affirming, but a part of the community as well? In that case, you can access the the NQTTCN, which is the National Queer and Trans Therapist of Color Network. 
Um, and you can look at some of these links and see a little bit about what they're about. Um, I do wanna mention Open Path Collective that they are, um, they are a low fee national directory that you are able to access for $30, at as low as $30 per session. The last one is if you are, and again, those are national directories, whether you are in California, whether you are out of state, any of those states, those directories are so, so rich with amazing therapists. And at the bottom, it tells you how much they charge, if they have sliding scale, and if they have pro bono slots. So pro bono means that you get free therapy. So you can give them a call and ask them about their pro bono slots. Are they taking on any more clients? How does the sliding scale look like to see if this is something for you? Now, if you are a victim of a crime in California, there is the victim, they call VCP, which is the California Victim Compensation Program. And there are some organizations that take it. There are many organizations that take it. Some of them are here, which is Miracles Counseling Center, Centro de Bienestar Familiar, um, Lumina Alliance, Community Solutions in Casa de la Familia. And some of these, like Lumina Alliance and Miracles Counseling Center, even if there was no police report, even if you just want to address trauma, they provide services for free as well. And with that being said, I'm gonna pass it on to Danny so that they can give you some resources that Immigrants Rising uh, provides and offers with for folks in California and outside of California. Thank you, Mayra. Um, yeah, I'm gonna get into some of the immigrant rising resources. Um, so one of um, one of our resources is the Mental Health Connector Program, um, and this is for undocumented adults. Um, so it's really open to mostly anyone who's in California who's residing in California. Um, specifically, that's um, what the programming is right now, but hopefully in the future we can have it available in other states. Um, so yeah, the Mental Health Connector program connects um, undocumented people with psychological support, one-on-one -on -one support. Um, you don't have to pay out of pockets for this for this service. Um, you don't have to have health insurance. Um, and yeah, it connects you with folks who are who share a similar experience as yours, who may be also a migrant, who may have also been undocumented at some point in the past. Um, so we really try to pair up folks with, um, yeah, mental health professionals who have lived experience as well to, to meet the needs, to meet your needs. Um, and then the other resource that we have right now is the wellness support groups. Um, so compared to the connector, connect mental health connector program, the wellness support groups are available to anybody in the United States. Um, and these are six weeks, um, a six week, one hour um, non-clinical support group. And these are all, all of these support groups are led by licensed um, mental health professionals. Um, and yeah, the, the topics kind of vary. Um, we switch them out every six weeks. Um, and Right now, here are some of the ones that we're going to be offering in January. Um, folks can sign up. Um, I think it's already on the website. I can make sure to put the link if it's not already on the chat. Um, but yeah, so here, like if you want to, for example, be part of the Undocu LGBTQ support group, um, those, those support groups are very flexible and you really get to propose like what you even want to talk about in the support group. So for example, like the first week, um, folks can just like vote like there's a poll and you can vote on different topics that you want to talk about relating to like being on docu lgbtq identifying um and yeah pretty much the goal is just to help participants um just stay grounded and also feel connected to other folks who are going through similar things and also just to be able to have like conversations facilitated by a mental health professional um yeah, so here are some of the upcoming wellness support groups that we're having. Um, like I said, they're starting on the week of January 16th. Um, and you can already sign up on the website and like you can register. And you can also find more, find out more about all the facilitators. So every facilitator has a quick bio and a picture. So you get to 
also know who you would be talking to in the support group. Um, so yeah, we have an Undocu API group and Undocu Love um, support group, which is going to be about just dating and being in romantic relationships uh, while undocumented or being in mixed status relationships. Um, we have an Undocu Women's Support Group. We're gonna have two actually. Um, so there's one like in the evening and one later in the day. So the times vary. So you get to have some option on that. And for the first time ever, we're gonna have like a support group that's fully in Spanish. Um, Mayra Jimenez, who is gonna be the facilitator for that group, um, is yeah gonna be leading the whole the whole support group in Spanish. So we're excited to have that for the first time. Um, and hopefully we get to offer it um, more times this year in the future. And some additional resources that we wanna share with y'all are these hotlines. Um, yeah, I think uh, because some of the immigrants rising resources like the Mental Health Connector um, are specifically in California, we wanna also make sure that y'all have access to other hotlines that are national. Um, and yeah, the one the support groups are a great resource that you can access even if you're not in California. So those are definitely for anybody um, who identifies as undocumented or migrant in the United States that wants a space to connect with others and just really get to, um, yeah, build ways to stay grounded um, and get to talk about that. And these are also some free apps that we wanted to um, let y'all know that they exist. There's a lot of things that you can access directly on your phone um, just for your mental health. Um, and yeah, some of them are, they're here. I think they have the, the range between the ages of like um, folks that want to use them. Like if you're four, <laughs> there's literally the Fluid, Fluid app. And a lot of these are for free. So yeah, pretty cool. And um, Rocio is going to talk to you all more about our mental health campaign. And then we did have a question about whether these offerings are available in person or via Zoom. And both the support that we're um, offering through the Mental Health Connector is through telehealth. So it's via virtually. And the wellness support group, groups are also via Zoom. So the wellness support groups are available for folks um, nationally within the United States. So uh, it's not just California, but it's available for folks outside of California as well, which is really exciting. And one of the things that I had shared earlier in terms of the role that I played here at Immigrants Rising was in supporting the ability for undocumented professionals who are pursuing and um, obtaining their licensure in California to become licensed therapists to be able to have access uh, to the resources and the support that they need. Um, we have worked with a cohort of program participants who have been um, offering mental health services to our undocumented community through the Mental Health Connector. So if you or someone you know is reaching out to Immigrants Rising and would like to have access to mental health services through the Mental Health Connector, they might actually be matched with one of our program participants who are working towards accumulating their hours and can connect to the um, experience. And so I'd like to play uh, this video as one of the initiatives that we have this year because we would love to expand and continue to offer these services that are highly needed in our community and not just within the undocumented community, but across many communities. So I would like to just share a quick video with you all and share a little bit more about um, this campaign. I am a former undocumented human that just became a legal permanent resident. I am an undocumented associate clinical social worker. I migrated to the U.S. when I was 11 years old. With Immigrants Rising, I'm a participant of the mental health career program, which was made to support undocumented therapists in getting their license. 
we will be giving therapy to undocumented folks. And so at the end of the program, around 45 people would have gotten free therapy. When I graduated in 2020, I knew that my options to earn money were very limited. I built my own business on documental health. And this allowed me to partner with Immigrant Rising and build this amazing program. There is a huge gap and a huge need for mental health resources within the undocumented community. Immigrants Rising is doing an amazing job of providing programs that are filling. The current gaps in that system. One of the biggest challenges in my master's in becoming a therapist was no one told me what I could do. Therapy is expensive. Therapy is not available to everybody. Usually you graduate and you work as a W-2, so you're getting paid hourly. For an undocumented therapist, it's not the same. You have to volunteer your time. So that's 3,000 hours, which could translate to like three years. <laughs> and I cannot imagine that everybody without a work authorization has volunteered 3,000 hours in order to have their own private practice. In order to get access in mental health, we need to have more stability. With your help, we hope that we can raise enough money to put at least one individual through the mental health career program. Just watching somebody realize that, that they're not trapped. They never were. I and mean, as a therapist, I know that people have the power to heal. This program is gonna allow culturally competent overall badass clinicians to serve those folks in the community to be able to have your clients say like i am strong i'm resilient i've done so much to get where i'm at that is powerful i'm so glad that immigrants rising um, listened to me and they went for it and they believed in me And uh, just like that, uh, we believe in every undocumented person that you're working with. We believe in you and your ability to be able to offer the tools, the guidance, and the information that you have to be able to offer that to members of your community. And we'll go ahead and add the link um, to this page if you're interested in donating as well as if you would like to share this with your networks as well. And I would like to open it up for some questions and see if there are some questions that folks have about some of the resources, some of the topics that we covered, um, or if you have any other specific questions around how you can continue to foster mental health and mental wellness amongst um, our community. So we'll open it up for some questions. One of the questions that we have is, we do have a question around what are some additional resources that we can direct or where can we direct students to additional resources? I would like to share that on our website, we do have a particular page where folks can access uh, additional information around mental health services. So if folks visit immigrantsrising.org, um, there is a section around topics and there's a particular uh, topic which is specific to mental health. Um, this is an easy way for you to be able to direct students to the Mental Health Connector um, the most up-to-date information about the support groups. We also have a, an UndocU Immigrant Mental Health Grounding and Self-Care Toolkit um, that we've launched and a mental health um, toolkit, which is focusing on taking care of yourself and your loved ones. Um, and you can also sign up for the newsletter. Another question is, do you know any organizations with similar profiles as Immigrants Rising, but based in New York City? Sorry, I was answering in the chat, but yes, I also linked um, the mental health, uh, undocumentedhealth.com website. Um, on the resources page, I also have some resources from other states like Arizona, Colorado, Georgia, Louisiana, Maryland, and so on. 
Um, there's one for New York. There, it's called the NYC Well. And they offer free mental health resources for New York residents, regardless of, or of immigration status. Um, some of those that some of those resources in different states are not specifically mental health related, like the NYC Well. However, um, there are other institutions that are linked in there that work with the immigrant community. And typically those institutions have very specific resources in the area because most of the time um, that is something that each institution has that they have referral resources and they can provide you with the resources that are specifically for the community that you are in. So that is, uh, I would like to encourage you to look into those resources, uh, but if you can't find any of those resources, uh, please, send a message to Danny, send a message to Rocio uh, or the mental health team and then in Immigrant Rising and they'll be able to redirect you and maybe try to find a resource that is specifically for the state that you live in. But thank you for the question. I'm glad that we were able to have one link for, for that. It's another question that we have, which is, um, other than social media, what other platforms do you utilize to spread the word about your organization? So we are um, aiming to make a strong presence within social media. Some of the other ways in which we have, um, let me share the screen. Some of the other ways in which we try to reach our community is uh, by working in collaboration specifically with educators. Um, by inviting educators to, to join us in webinars, information sessions, um, events such as these. And in order for folks to stay involved and to stay updated, depending on the topic that you're interested in, for example, if you would like to learn more about mental health, um, we do have a newsletter that is specific about mental health for you to receive updates. If you would like to receive updates about what's happening at the org level, you can sign up for our newsletter. Um, that way you can have access to the newest um, and the most, uh, the newest information and the latest updates and all of the updates include information about legal information, entrepreneurship, mental health, career opportunities, resources, and uh, services as well. And one question that we have is, where can we, where can we find resources for Spanish-speaking immigrants in California? Also, how can I collaborate with you? Uh, thank you so much for your question and for your willingness to collaborate with us. There are, depending on uh, what are some of the areas that you might be interested in collaborating uh, with us, there are some areas, um, some opportunities that we have for licensed therapists uh, to collaborate with us. We have opportunities for educators to collaborate with us. So depending on your interest, um, you can, we're going to be sharing our contact information, but you can share, send us um an email, and then we can identify what are some of the potential opportunities um, in which you can collaborate with us depending on your, um, your capacity, your expertise, and the field of work that you are interested in. And then um, finding resources for Spanish-speaking immigrants in California. Myra, I don't know if you have information on this particular topic specifically around mental health. Yes, so again, those national directories are amazing because they, you can um, filter by the languages spoken and you have no idea, like so many different clinicians in both Spanish and other languages that you can uh, take a look at that. Another one that are specifically for California, I put some institutions like Carecen, La Clinica, Familias Unidas, there are different institutions that provide services 100% in Spanish. So I hope that those are helpful. Um, but again, by calling one place or getting in touch with one place, they might be also able to refer you to other places if you need them specifically for, for that 
um, for, for whatever the needs of the clients are. Um, and again, also that resource, the mental health, undocumentedhealth.com forward slash resources. That's where you're also going to see some other free uh, services in Spanish as well and other languages. Thank you, Mara. Another question that we have is, uh, I graduated with a master's in counseling a bit ago. Congratulations. Um, have not been able to put my degree to work due to DACA issues, so no valid work permit at the moment. Can you point me towards any direction? I am seeking to become uh, an MFT. Uh, that is an amazing question, and I would love for you to send us an email. Um, I'm going to be sharing my contact info at the end. You may be able to apply to our mental health career program. Uh, so there may be an opportunity for you to join our program. Um, our program is intended to support folks in meeting the licensure requirements, uh, while also providing folks a stipend to be able to support their ability to be able to participate in this program. And folks do not need a work authorization. They do not need DACA uh, to be able to participate in this program. So I will go ahead and send you an email um, and also encourage you to sign up to our newsletter, um, to our mental health newsletter. That way you can stay updated when we launch our next um, cohort of our mental health career program as well. So I'll go ahead and add this in the chat uh, for you. Um, I want to thank everyone so much for joining us, for being part of this webinar, for your engagement, your participation. And again, I really hope that you all get to honor yourselves today for getting up this morning, getting out of bed, doing whatever it had to, it took for you to get through your day and be here with us and for continuing to show up for yourself and for the people around you and for undocumented community. Thank you all so much. And uh, we look forward to seeing you all for the next webinar series of On Docu Thrive.